We're eating a thousand times the amount of oil and soybean oil since the 1900. And you know what? Most of the oil consumed is cooked. And when you cook an oil at high temperature, you form rancid compounds that are carcinogenic. It's bad enough people are oiling their food. They're, oiling their, they're cooking their foods in oil. And they're going to fast food restaurants where the oil's fried for hours and the food, they're dipping the potatoes and the chicken wings into oil that's been sitting there being cooked for hours on end. Even the fumes are carcinogenic. Then you have the whole southern part of the United States where people are eating all these fried foods called the stroke belt. We have the most cancer and the most heart attack and strokes in the world, right in this country. We've got the most overweight and sickly and shortened lifespan and dangerous people and dangerous lifespans in the whole world right here in this country. Thought we're supposed to be edumacated or something here. I'm thinking though, it must be the alligators. A lot of alligators down there in those areas. That was a stupid joke, I know. <laughs> but you have to understand that laughing and smiling makes you live longer. And the joke doesn't have to be funny. Just laugh and smile anyway. It extends your lifespan. Keep that smile on your face. Thank you. All right, the standard American diet, I always say, this is a diet well designed by ISIS to kill us. <laughs> Divided into three categories, processed foods, animal products, and processed foods and animal products do not contain antioxidants and phytochemicals. There's no significant nutrient load, and there's no fiber load in there. Don't forget the fiber and the nutrients control your appetite. Fiber is, is broken down by bacteria into short chain fatty acids like butyrate, and butyrate is absorbed and travels to the hypothalamus and is one of the factors that ratchets down, controls the apostat in the hypothalamus, how much fiber you eat. Fiber controls the apostat by the stretching of the stomach receptors and occupying space and holding water in your digestive tract, but there's a lot of other ways that high fiber foods control apostat too. So we divide food into three rough categories, whole plant foods, animal products and processed foods, and as you can see, most of what we eat in this country are processed foods and animal products, and I'm saying a piece of chicken is like a bagel. Why am I saying a piece of chicken is like a bagel? The same thing. Why? Right, because they're, they both are a source of calories or macronutrients, but neither one contains any significant micronutrient load. Do you follow what I'm saying? There's no amount of phytochemicals and antioxidants. And even on vitamins and minerals are just mostly calories with, without the con things that control your appetite. And don't forget, as you metabolize calories, as you ingest calories, what happens to the body? As you're eating food and eating calories, you're producing toxins and poisons. You're producing free radicals with every bite. When you're eating processed foods and animal products, you're producing free radicals and reactive oxygen species that age us. The common cause of all disease is what? buildup of toxins and free radicals in the body, reactive oxygen species, and of course advanced glycation end products. There's, the there's other toxins too that age us, but the two main classifications of toxins that age us and create chronic disease are free radicals or, re or reactive oxygen species, right, and advanced glycation end products, which age tissues by having glucose moieties being binding onto proteins and cells. Put those together, we have what ages and causes disease. When a diabetic develop becomes blind, Right? Due to diabetic retinopathy, it's the buildup of those AGEs in the neural tissues that cause, they develop nerve damage in their legs, they go kidney failure. It's always the same thing. It's the buildup of free radicals and advanced glycation end products into their tissues that are causing these symptoms to occur. But they occur in people who are not diabetic, though at a slower rate. But here's what I'm saying. As you consume calories, you're always forming toxic substances like free radicals. And the more calories you consume, the more toxic substances you're making. But when you eat fruits and vegetables and beans and nuts and seeds and mushrooms, when you eat natural plant foods, the body, those foods are supplying the antioxidants that diffuse and wipe away and take away the, those free radicals thus formed from the metabolism of those calories. So you don't have a buildup of, of free radicals. They support and, they, and these nutrients found in plants enable and activate the part of the cellular machinery to remove toxins, to enhance repair, to re remove methylation defects, broken DNA, and to remove free radicals. 
Free, you don't have to be afraid of free radical production or the production of toxins by food because your body has a built-in mechanism to deal with it. You only have to worry about that if you're eating foods that don't supply the nutrients that enable the body to work normally. You following this? A piece of uh, chicken is like a bagel because they generate free radicals, they generate hormones that make you age. The chicken makes you generate too much IGF-1. It's pure protein, practically. And all those protein calories with no phytonutrients and fibers rushed into the bloodstream real rapidly makes the excess production of growth-promoting hormones that allow tumors and cancers to replicate. And the bagel also promotes the excessive secretion of insulin because a bagel is the same thing as shooting up marshmallows. <laughs> the body doesn't differentiate sugar from marshmallows and sugar from white flour or white rice. It's just sugar entering the bloodstream. Whether you have maple syrup or honey, it doesn't matter that there's an insignificant amount of nutrients associated with it. If it's so calorically concentrated with all that sugar flooding the bloodstream, you're producing an excessive amount of insulin and insulin is atherosclerotogenic, it promotes the production of atherosclerosis, and it produces cellular replication, fat growth, angiogenesis, and, is, and, it, and permits cancer to develop on your body. The bagel is like the chicken for numerous reasons. You got that now? It's one reason that both, there's no significant micronutrient load, two, they're both hormonally unfavorable, and three, there's no source of phytonutrients and antioxidants to re, who inhibit the production of free radicals that age you. Our diet has to be made up of plants that are natural and nutrient-rich. That's the secret to a long life. It's not that complicated. I'm overcomplicating it, right? Because whole, these whole natural foods are naturally low in calories, and they occupy space, and they fill you up. These foods like Brussels sprouts and string beans and artichokes and asparagus and raw vegetables like snow pea pods and carrots and parsnips and, and, and kohlrabi and cabbages and, and, you know, fruits like melons and oranges and berries and papaya and, of course, mushrooms and eggplants and tomatoes and peppers and cow. All these foods have less than 100 calories per pound. You could be living with, living with Tarzan, living with the gorillas. And you're eating the gorilla diet, all green vegetables, and you know what? You're going to become too thin eating the gorilla diet. Because green vegetables at like 50 calories a pound, you're not going to get enough calories eating all the greens with those gorillas. You don't have enough strength to, to swing through the vines and the trees because you know why? Because try eating enough, try just eating green vegetables to get enough calories in. You'd have to eat like a whole wheelbarrow for like 30 pounds of food to get enough calories. It's so low in calories. I tried it once. <laughs> couldn't do it. Your jaw, my teeth were getting sore. I couldn't even chew all day long. So much. It's, it's so easy to lose weight. You can't become overweight. You can't even get enough weight on your body. You lose too much weight. Are you kidding me? How simple it is to lose weight just by having all these advanced diabetics coming into my facility with a blood sugar of 500. That within a day, their blood sugars are low, eating, all of, eating large amounts of food. Because you're eating foods that are naturally... Low in, naturally low in nutrients, and they occupy space in the stomach. In order to have gained weight to become overweight, you couldn't have eaten natural foods like that. You have to be eating oil and sweets and sugar and flour and high glycemic carbohydrates and animal products because you can't fit that many vegetables and fruits into your stomach without, filling, without you getting full. And then they shuts down the apostat. You only probably get like 400 calories in per meal. You start to get full, and you're not supposed to eat till you're full anyway. Push yourself away from the table, stand up, and say, do I feel anything there? Let me ask you a question over here. How's your liver feeling today? How about your kidney? How's your pancreas doing? Fine, okay, good. Here's the thing. You shouldn't know, and have, you, shouldn't know you have a stomach. You shouldn't feel your stomach. You shouldn't be aware of your internal organs. They should always feel the same. You shouldn't eat till you're uncomfortable and know your stomach's distended and uncomfortable. You shouldn't be getting reflux and lying in bed at night and having food you can't roll over on your stomach because the food comes out of your mouth and you're spitting up acid. <laughs> it's crazy. These humans are nuts. It's like, it reminds me of the experiments you do on animals. Like they give the animals cocaine, and the animals, because of the stimulation from the cocaine, they prefer that to food. So they stop eating and they just eat cocaine. 
They stop taking food, they just peck, the animal just pecks on the button to get injected with cocaine until they die of starvation. See the same thing with food. Take any animal. Works great with human animals when they're young. Instead of giving them real food like peas and carrots and fruit and nuts, you give them a concentrated calorie like cocaine, like french fries, like white bread or pizza or sweets or candy, and they automatically take those heavily stimulated brain stimulating foods and they stop eating any natural foods and they just peck at the cocaine. These human kids, they'll just eat french fries and pizza and candy and that's it, they've lost any attraction or desire, just like any other animal. They're not any different than any other animal. No animal is going to choose to eat their natural diet over these franken foods that are, delay, that are designed to rush the body, flood the body with high levels of nutrients and cause brain stimulation. So of course you have a kid that won't eat vegetables now and is just looking for brain stimulation. You following this? Brain stimulating foods destroy... You know, it's funny because my children always could never figure out how parents tried to poison their kids. They never could figure that out. The kid goes out there, stands in the outfield for a few minutes with a glove on his hand, looks around at the bees, walks off the field to a round of applause, and the mother's standing there with a donut hole to give him. It's like, what? You're giving this kid donuts now just because he stood in the outfield with his mitt on? <laughs> it's insanity. What does that mean? It means the parents are drug addicts. That's what it means, because food is a drug. Sweets are a drug. Fried sugar and fried white flour is a donut. What's more addicting and dangerous than that? You're better off with the cocaine. Next time the kid's off the field, hold that syringe for him. <laughs> Here, let me shoot you up. That was a great job you did out there. <laughs> Soccer, they get heroin. Not that funny, but you could have smiled on that one a little more. <laughs> so here, so I'm, one of the things I'm saying here, to avoid overeating on high-calorie food, fill up on nutrient-rich food. That's how you suppress your appetite, right? And nutrients turn down the apostat. Nutrients and fiber turn down the apostat, the stretch receptors, but the brain has receptors for nutrients, and we send signals from nutrients up to the brain, especially the hypothalamus, that prevents overeating. So this is all about fast food versus slow food. What's fast food? Fast food, the food you buy in a fast food restaurant or a convenience store? Sure, food that's fast, you know, food that's fast that can come out of a bag or a bottle, you can drink it down like a soda, you can open up a bag of potato chips, you can rip open that bag of ring-dings or whatever they're called, ding-dings, ding-dongs, ring-dongs, whatever they're called. You can eat those foods really fast, they're digested fast, they go into the bloodstream fast, they're, ex they're super heavily flavored with sugar, they're highly palatable, they have no fiber, they're digested very rapidly, they flood the body really rapidly, they grow the brain rapidly. And you want more. Next day, you don't even want to think of what you're doing, you just, while you're driving the car, it just goes automatically, right away it just goes to drunken donuts till you get your, <laughs> or to McCancer, or Burger Cut. Pizza King, whatever they're called. Cancer King, I don't know. You see, an example of fast foods, or foods that are digested and absorbed fast with no nutrients in them, are oil and white flour, right? The typical poisons people eat, poison themselves with white flour products. And then an example of slow foods, that instead of entering the bloodstream at like 30 to 50 calories a minute, they enter the bloodstream at one or two calories a minute, are like beans and nuts, typical slow foods. Instead of oil, you go to nuts. Instead of white flour, you go to beans. Instead of the fastest foods, you go to the slowest foods. Beans are the slowest carbohydrate because they have the most slowly digestible carbohydrates. And they're the food with the highest amount of fiber and resistant starch. And the word resistant starch means those carbohydrates are resistant to enzymatic degradation, which means they're not even going to be broken down into a carbohydrate. Some of the starch in beans get fermented by bacteria into fat. The starch is chained into fat. But the bacteria break down the starch and turn it into fat so far down in the digestive tract 
towards the distal end of the small intestines and the proximal part of the large intestines, that 90% of those calories turned into fat pass through into the toilet bowl and don't get absorbed. So a certain percent of the calories in beans don't even come inside of you, they pass through you and increasing the stool fat. And more fat in the stool means less fat on you. Because the beans ratcheted down your apostat by those 200 calories and you felt like not eating the more full calories and they were just so slowly that it made you not hungry the whole rest of the day but you never even got all those calories into you. Some of them were stolen away in the toilet. It's naturally caloric restriction. And nuts, the same thing. When you eat nuts and seeds, they bind fat. And they bind fat through those sterols and stanols, pulling fat out into the toilet bowl. So not all the fat calories in nuts and seeds get absorbed. Some of them pass through into the toilet bowl. Yes. You felt like you ate 200 calories, you stopped eating, your apostat was ratcheted down by 200 calories, but you didn't even get all those 200 calories into you. And because those oil calories, or those fat calories, were absorbed so slowly, there was no revving up of fat storage hormones, and as nut and seed calories are absorbed so slowly, the body can preferentially burn them for energy instead of storing them as fat. If you have a flood of calories coming into the bloodstream, the body doesn't tolerate all those calories in the bloodstream. It has to store it as fat. All the glucose comes, it has to store it, right? But when they're coming in slowly, the body burns it for energy.